Hi and welcome to our first training session together. Now look, most speakers will never make it to the big time because in front of big audiences they literally become scared stiff. Their presentations become boring and even wooden. So in today's session we're going to go through the stress-free speaker system so you never dry up or break down on stage. So follow me now to the home studio and let's take you through this. So at this point, you're probably thinking to yourself, who is Andy Harrington and why should I believe anything he has to say about speaking? Well, look, I don't want you to believe anything blindly that I have to say. Instead, it's probably a better idea if you kind of put into practice the things that I'm going to share with you. And you'll probably find the magical effect they can have on both well, you and your presentations. Look, I can still remember the very first presentation I ever did. I was working for Churchill Insurance and they asked me to give a presentation to five people. And I was completely overcome with fear. And the thing was, I also made some pretty stupid mistakes as well. Because one of the things you begin with as a presenter is not always knowing what to do with your hands. And I was fiddling with uh, the flip chart pen. So much so that it must have been completely irritating to the audience. I was taking the lid off, I was putting the lid back on again. And I was, I was pretty boring as well, to be honest, and I must have bored them into submission. But let me tell you, that wasn't the worst thing. Because when I'd finished the presentation, I went into the restroom afterwards to wash my hands, and there was pen on my hands, but some of that pen had got transferred to the middle of my forehead, and I'd been presenting with this giant black spot right here in the middle of my head. So as you can see, being a well-rewarded professional speaker is not something that anyone's born with, but it is something that you can learn to become. However, let me make a distinction. What you're about to learn is not your classical public speaker training. Look, there's more than enough organisations doing that already. Toastmasters, the Professional Speakers Association, and a thousand and one other train-the-trainer courses. What you're about to learn are techniques that can make you into a professional speaker inside months, not years, and may just make you thousands, if not millions, from sharing your advice. So look, this is exactly why I developed the stress-free speaker system, so that when you walk out on stage at, say, the London O2 Arena, Hollywood Bowl, or maybe even Wembley Stadium, you'll nail it on stage too. We, we have people travelling from all over the world to put this system into practice in their presentations at the Public Speakers University and getting feedback from the very best speakers in the business on their presentations. So look, only continue to watch this if you're committed to putting this into action in your presentations and getting feedback so that you can perfect this system. All right, so what I want you to do now is go and get a pen right now and a piece of paper. And once you've done that, I want you to go ahead and write system right down the side of the page as I've got here. All right, so the very first step in the stress-free speaker system is so important because if you fail to pay attention to this, you'll never look confident on stage, and more importantly, you'll never ever have the audience believe what you're saying. And so what is the first step? Well, it is to focus on your state. What does that mean? It simply means that you've got to be able to control your state before and on stage in such a way that you come across as a true professional. So what that means is you've got to be able to do two things to control your state. Number one, you first got to control your physiology. And what I mean by that is really your breathing. Think about it. What is speaking anyway? Well, it's speaking whilst breathing out. You can't actually speak 
without breathing out. I mean, if you tried to kind of speak whilst you're breathing in, that would sound pretty weird. So in order to be able to speak effectively, you've got to first, before speaking, take a breath. And if you think in your own mind now about some of the most inexperienced speakers that you may have heard, one thing that's predominantly true for all of them is they speak often way too fast. And the problem with that is that not only will they not sound professional, but also their voice will go higher and more importantly, the audience will be tired and won't be able to keep up. Because think about it. In order for the audience to consume what you're saying, you've got to give them a few seconds or a moment to take in that piecemeal, that bite-sized chunk, make a picture of it in their mind, and then relate it to their lives. If you don't do that, it's just noise for the next hour while you're doing your presentation. So you've got to pause to give them that chance to catch up with what you're saying. So the second thing that will determine your state is your focus. I'm talking here about how you use your eyes. You see, your eyes can be used essentially in two different ways. Either your eyes will be in foveal vision, where you collapse down and look at just one thing to the exclusion of everything else. Or the other way you can do it is rather than be in foveal vision, to be instead in peripheral vision. And when you're in peripheral vision, you see what happens is you are aware of many, many things, not just one thing. So as you look right now at me here through the camera, I want you to begin to become aware of all the things on the outside of the screen. Even though you're looking at me, keep your awareness now on all the things on the outside of your computer screen. And you notice if you continue to do that, looking at me, but becoming aware of all the things here on the outside of the screen, sure enough, you'll begin to start to feel very, very relaxed. And more importantly, your state will become very calm and you come across as very, very measured indeed. So you want to make sure that you're able to put yourself in that state. Now, think about this. Remember when you first learned to drive a car. I want you to go back in that and remember that for a moment. You're sitting in the car, you feel a little bit nervous, and you're maybe holding the steering wheel in your hands, you look at all these levers and dials, and you look down the floor, there's three pedals, and you've got two feet if you're using a, a gear shift, and you're feeling somewhat kind of overwhelmed with all the many things to focus on. And if you think about it, as you look through that windscreen, what did you do? Well, Probably, you looked through the windscreen, held onto the steering wheel, and looked at the edge of the bonnet, hoping that you wouldn't hit something. Now, obviously, you know that by doing that, you begin in foveal vision. The problem with that is, you're excluding everything else, like the cars coming towards you that you're about to hit. So you don't want to do that. In the same way that when you were driving a car, when you were first driving a car, and another car came towards you on the other side of the road, part of your attention began to look at that one thing, and then you started to steer properly towards it. So you don't do that anymore, do you? So what do you do instead to have your state more in tune with becoming an excellent, outstanding driver of a car? Well, I suspect now you've got into peripheral vision, meaning that what you're doing now is you're looking out of the windscreen, but you're certainly not looking at the bonnet. In fact, you're looking out and surveying the whole scene and taking it all in. In fact, you've probably driven your car to different destinations who probably aren't even thinking about it consciously at all. Because you've put yourself into peripheral vision, you've allowed your unconscious to be the most important driver for your behavior. And you want to be able to do that when you are presenting. Because if you're conscious about it and you're thinking about it, and effectively, as a speaker, you're focusing on the edge of the bonnet, which is probably the edge of the stage. You're going to be in conscious awareness. And you're going to be in foveal vision. And you'll be focusing on your fear rather than focusing on your audience and delivering a message that has passion and the one that means you care about the people taking that message on board. So, to repeat, if you want to control your state, then what you have to learn to do is two things. Number one, Focus on your breathing. 
which means you can get passionate at times, but after a while, you've got to slow down to give people the chance to breathe themselves, for you to breathe, and for them to consume your material. And second, you've got to use your focus from foveal out here to peripheral vision. When you do that, your state will be the very best it can be to be a super outstanding professional speaker. The second point in our stress-free speaker system is important if you want to be seen as a true professional and to have real credibility on stage. And it's probably not what you think because most new speakers really struggle with this one. In fact, some experienced speakers do too. What it is, is that you must always on stage be yourself. What that means is, is that don't stand up there and try to pretend to be someone that you're not. What I mean by that is, is some speakers try to put on like a training persona, almost like a suit of armor, if you will, that to protect them, if you will. The challenge with that is, if you think about it, if you're wearing a suit of armor, what does it mean? It means you're presupposing that you'll be attacked. And sure enough, someone's going to try to find a chink in that armor because look, nobody's perfect. So drop the act, drop the idea that you need to be perfect. No one's perfect. So get up there and instead be real. Does that mean you have to become a little bit vulnerable? Yes. Disclosing part of yourself and being who you really are means that people will trust you more. Now, I tell you this because I made the same mistake myself when I began as a speaker. Having modeled Anthony Robbins, I wanted to be like him. Now, if you've ever been to an Anthony Robbins seminar, when you first walk in, you'll find dancers on stage. And they'll be kind of just clapping like this, and the audience kind of join in. It's a good way of building rapport with the audience. And then Tony comes in and takes that rapport. So, you know, clearly I thought this would be a very good idea to do. So what I did was I tried to become Anthony Robbins. And so if you walked in in 2003 to my live seminar, now it's a free event I was offering to people right here in the city of London. And as they walked in at maybe half past seven, not knowing me, just having responded to a newspaper or a radio advert, you would have walked in to a seminar off the street to find my mum, my sister, my wife and my father-in-law dancing on stage. What do you think people did when they saw that? They kind of walked in and went, what the, <laughs> just kind of turned around and completely left. So, you know, had 170 people registered for the event and I ended up speaking to around 60 because I completely alienated the audience by doing something that wasn't natural, it wasn't normal, it wasn't what people expected. I wasn't Anthony Robbins after all. So I made this mistake, so don't try to pretend to be someone that you're not. Be you. You are important and you are good enough to stand there and deliver this material. Because it's not actually about you. More importantly, what it's about is your processes. It's about what you have learnt that you can teach somebody else to do exactly the same thing. Don't try to come across as some celebrity. Don't pretend that you're someone amazing. Yes, years ago, this is what we used to do as speakers. We used to come out and be some amazing superstar, some, and, and we concentrated really on our image, but all of that has completely changed. Why? Because what we need now is to know that people are real. Look at social media, look at how everyone's trying to become smaller, look at how everyone's trying to become closer to their people rather than aloof from it. Years ago, you couldn't reach speakers because they were there on stage, they disappeared behind the curtain, never saw them again. Don't make that same mistake. Instead, be yourself. Be vulnerable and be real, and don't try to pretend to be something other than you're not, and definitely don't try to be perfect. So the third element in the stress-free speaker system is crucially important if you want to look really good on stage. You can be confident inside, but if you don't demonstrate that to the audience, again, they're not going to buy into your message and you will ultimately become more stressed because things won't be going your way on stage. So the most important thing you need to do to master this is to have an amazingly fantastic, brilliant, professional stance. Now, most people 
don't actually know how to stand on a stage. If you looked at an unprofessional rookie speaker, you'd first note that when they took to the stage, they probably wouldn't stand right at the very front of the stage. They'd actually back off a little bit and stand a little bit at what we call upstage. And the problem with that is, is that you're pulling away from the audience and they'll feel it. The other thing that will happen is as they stand there on that stage, they'll look in a posture that looks anything other than they're comfortable in their own skin. So this whole thing begins with your feet. So let's go through it briefly now. Now, of course, we cover this in much more detail at the university program, but let's give you a snapshot now of what you need to focus on so you can start practicing this at home yourself. All right, so follow along right now, wherever you are. Stand up right now so you can follow along with how I can guide you into having the professional speaker stance. Now, if you take a look down at my feet now, you'll see that my feet are pointing pretty much straight forward. Now, this is unusual because if you're a man, most likely what you'll do, firstly, is have your stance too wide, meaning you've probably got your feet at shoulder width apart rather than at hip width apart. Now think about it. The more you have your feet closer together, the taller you're going to be. So, you know, let's just take this to an extreme. If I now stand very wide, I've lost about two inches of height. Now, when you meet me for the first time, you'll see I need all the height I can get. So, but it, look, it's not about you being um, tall, but it's about looking like you're using all of your available height. And so, start with your feet hip width apart. Now, you don't, you know, obviously, if you could have your feet even closer, you'd be taller, but that would look very, very odd indeed, okay? So, just hip width apart. And the feet must point straight forward. So, again, a big common tell if someone's not done this before as a speaker is they'll put their feet, if you're a man, at what we call 10 to 2 on the clock face. Now, think about it. As soon as you put your feet out at 10 to 2, what will happen is, if you now look at my hips, you'll see that what naturally happens is my hips will just rotate forward like that. So my hips are now over the top of my toes. The problem with that is, is that now your belly's sticking out, which doesn't look particularly good. And what will happen is now your back will have to be going at this kind of an angle so that you'll actually stand up straight. And of course now with your head, if your head was in line with your back, you'd look like that. So to avoid that, because you look really weird, it's uncomfortable, you'll put your head forward. And from the side, you now look like Mr. Bean, <laughs> if you've ever seen that TV show, which effectively means you look really uncomfortable. Now, most people think they're standing up straight when they do this. So instead, turn the feet in and put your hips vertically above the ankles. And now with your body upper posture, lengthen your spine. Do not breathe into the chest because that won't work. You'll be uncomfortable. Just think about lengthening the spine. And so you look like you're totally 100% owning your body posture and looking like you can own the stage, command the stage. As soon as you go from this, I mean, look at the difference between this. If I was to present to you the whole time like this, how would that look? It looks like I, I don't mean what I, I say, which means you won't buy into the message. Okay? It might be more comfortable for me if I'm used to doing that, but it's not the right kind of impression that you want to be purveying to your audience. Okay, now ladies, what you'll tend to do, if you look down at my feet, is what you'll do is tend to have one foot straight forward and then the other foot at an angle like that. And you'll put your weight distribution onto, in this case, the right side and tilt your hips very slightly. This is a very feminine posture. Now, whilst that's good because you're feminine, it may be comfortable, what you know is gonna happen at some point is you're gonna do that and you'll shift to the other side. And then a few moments later, you'll have to shift to this side, and then you'll shift to this side. So what do you think the impression of the audience is when you keep shifting your balance from one to the other? That's right, you're shifty. You're not someone who can be trusted. So no matter whether you're a man or whether you're a lady, you want to have an outstanding speaker stance, which means your feet will be hip width apart, your hips will be vertically over the top of your ankles, nice central position, and a nice upright, lengthened spine, your shoulders should be balanced, your head should be balanced on your shoulders, so you look everything to be the consummate professional that you know that you are inside. 
The next element of the stress-free speaker system is vital if you want to have the audience hang on your every word and stay totally engaged with your message. Because one of the things you must be able to do as a great speaker is to control your tonality. And what I mean by that is you've got to have a range in your voice. It's contrast that keeps people on the edge of their seats. What I mean by that is that you've got to be able to change your voice pattern. You've got to be able to change your voice tonality, change the volume, change a number of different things in order to keep your audience engaged because the last thing you want to do is come across as monotone. A monotone, well, <laughs> if you were to have a heartbeat monitor on you and we heard a monotone, you would be dead. <laughs> and that's exactly how your audience are feeling when you are presenting in a monotone. Meaning, they just want it to end because they are dying in their seats. So what you must be able to do is to change these various elements of your voice. So let's talk about that now. The first thing you can do with your voice is to use a medium pace and to use a medium volume and a medium pitch and concentrate really in this tonality on this part of your body, sounding out the words correctly, meaning that your diction is good and you've got a crystal clear clarity sounding in your voice. However, just staying in that modality only whilst quite comfortable would eventually lull your audience into a sleep pattern. Because like anything, if done over and over again, it becomes the norm. So people will learn to fall back into their own patterns. In fact, what will happen is they'll fall back inside themselves and what they'll do is have a conversation with themselves rather than focusing on your message that you're delivering on the outside. So the next thing you can do is change your tonality as I'm beginning to do now and speed up a bit. You can hear that I'm speeding up now and it's getting faster and my words are getting shorter and more punchier in the way I'm delivering that message. And this is really good if you want to call your audience to action and raising the volume of your voice and become really triumphant and becoming someone that really means what they say. Now, of course, if you overdo this, you become overbearing, so you don't want to do that too much. But at times, it can really wake your audience up. Bob Proctor is very good at this, if you know him as a speaker. He'll be speaking one tonality, he'll be speaking like this, and suddenly go, and this is what you must do, and he suddenly jumps out in the middle of nowhere and really ignites the audience. It's a kind of explosive way of doing it, but it really works as a speaker. So the last voice pattern is where you slow right down. And even pause for longer than you ever dreamed was possible as a speaker. And even breathe like that and then wait for a few moments before delivering your talk. You're even lengthening the words. Even maybe as a whisper. I mean, you know, the funny thing is that when you speak in this tonality, you can be saying something that has no meaning at all. And yet you can really still have that kinesthetic effect where you really open somebody up and it almost magnifies what you're saying. So remember, your punchlines don't always have to be delivered in that triumphant way. Sometimes if you have a foundational phrase, something that sums up what you just said, almost like a golden nugget, a quote that may one day be in a book with your name over the top of it, sometimes you can deliver that in this tonality. And you know something else that's good about that tonality too? Is if you continue to stay in the speaker stance and to stay in state, you can be inside not knowing what you're going to say next but you're just pausing while you gather your thoughts. And as long as you don't look up, as long as you don't look down, as long as you don't touch your face or give anything away that you don't know what you're saying next, the audience will think you've paused for effect. The very next element in your stress-free speaker system is what I think the most important. Because if you really want to grip your audience, 
If you want your audience hanging on your every word, then you must learn to put this into action. You see, most speakers never really ever truly connect with their audience. Because I'm talking here about, I'm talking about eye contact. You see, I learned this in a very shocking way. Because I was at a seminar in 1992 with the great Brian Tracy. And about halfway through, we got the opportunity to meet Brian personally. And I can still remember vividly walking up to shake his hand. As I did so, he looked down at me and completely berated me for the way that I'd shaken his hand. You see, I had looked down and not locked eyes with Brian. And that's definitely not a good thing to do with someone like Brian Tracy. He looked at me and said, young man. How dare you shake my hand and not look me directly in the eye? Let's do that again, shall we? Now, I was completely taken aback. But I'll tell you, it shifted me. And later on as a speaker, I recognised that if I was going to connect with someone, I better damn well make sure I had good eye contact. So what do most speakers do? Well, the majority of speakers, what they'll do is they'll look and survey the audience. They'll kind of spray their eye contact around, never really holding eye contact for more than just a few moments at a time. Let's take a look live now as I teach this on stage. Eye contact. So here's what you do. There's 8,000 people in this room. My job is to have 8,000 individual conversations with you. Meaning, I pick one person out, I focus on you, I speak to you for five seconds. I pick somebody else out, I speak to you for just five seconds. I look in the back and I look at my focus over there, I pick one person, I look directly at you, and I look at you for, and I speak to you personally for that time. I come right back here and I speak just to you for that period of time. I look at the back and I find somebody else and speak to them for five seconds and hold that gaze. You do that and you'll do something very important. It meets a very important human need. If you looked at Tony Robbins' human needs, it fulfills your need for significance. Write it down. Eye contact with your audience, held longer than most speakers will hold it for, will make you feel very significant, man, won't it? Because when the speaker looks at you and gives you that message, you're like, when Tony did it to me, when I was in that seminar, I was like, he's talking just to me. And it made me feel so important. But most speakers don't do it. They kind of just spread their message around, look up, look down. You've got to focus and hold that bond for longer than you normally would. Because what happens is most of us, when we look at eye contact with someone, we'll look away the moment it gets uncomfortable. And do you know why? Do you want to know why we look away when it gets uncomfortable? Because the bond is starting to be created and you are not ready for that level of intimacy with that person. And you cannot afford to do that as a speaker. You need to be intimate. You need to love your audiences. Love them. Really connect with your heart to your audience and share who you are. Because most people get up and speak and try to pretend to be someone they're not. You just be you on stage. Don't wear any armor. Don't be pretend to somebody different. Be you. Be authentic. Be real. Be transparent. Who agrees with that, by the way? Raise your hand and say, I. Because you'll never feel comfortable on stage trying to pretend to be someone you're not. It feels difficult. Just be you. Learn to be you with more people. And connect with people with eye contact. So let's take a look at this here. So, randomly select people in the audience. It's got to be random. You can't do five seconds with you, five seconds with you, five seconds with you. You can't just go down the line. That doesn't work. It's got to be randomly done. That's how it works. Next. Look directly into their eyes while speaking, and then hold the eye contact until the bond is created. Okay? Who understands that little piece, please? Raise your hand and say, aye. aye. Make sure you do that, even in your small conversations with three or four people. Sometimes we get stuck just looking at one person, ignoring the other two. Just connect with them for five seconds. Come and bring this person in. Draw this person in. That's the key to great presentations. Remember, very important part of the stress-free speaker system, eye contact. Not knowing the final step in the stress-free speaker system could mean that as a presenter, you'll come across as wooden. Because the 
thing that a lot of speakers struggle with is what to do with these. You know, do you put them in your pockets? <laughs> do you put them down by your sides? Do you wave them around wildly while you're speaking? How do you have your hands under control? Because as a speaker, you've got to disconnect these from this. Your hands have to be disconnected from your mouth, which means if your hands are moving, they're moving because you want them to, not because they're just moving and not under your control. So I'm going to introduce to you now the last part of our stress-free speaker system, which is knowing all about movement. How do you move? Specifically, how do you move your hands around so that it adds value to your message rather than be distracting from your message? So there are a number of different gestures that really can mark you out as a truly professional speaker. So that is the stress-free speaker system. And it's just one of a number of systems that we teach our students at the Public Speakers University program, where you don't only just learn it, but you implement it into your presentations live there in the workshop. And I'm gonna be teaching you another one of these systems in the next video in this series. And let me tell you why you must watch it. Because if you've ever sat in front of a blank PowerPoint slide, and gone completely blank yourself and didn't know what to do to put it together. If you've ever sat in front of a blank piece of paper and thought, I've no clue how I'm gonna put this whole entire presentation together, you wanna make sure that you get my Kickstart Content Creator. Something I created for myself that means not only you create presentations that gets you standing ovations, they might just make you a fortune in sales at the back of the room as well. Oh, uh, one last thing actually. Will you do me a favor? I'd really, really love to hear from you and love to hear your feedback. What is it that you learned in this video that stood out for you? And how are you gonna use this stuff in your very next presentations? So underneath this video, you'll see a place where you can leave your comments. Go ahead and leave your comments there and tell us about how this presentation you saw today has helped you transform your speaking. So until next time, I wish you all the happiness and all the wealth in the world.